Thank you so much, ma'am. That was really elaborative and kind for you to go through the entire slide. Thank you very much. A very good evening, a very good morning to all of you. It's still not afternoon, so a very good morning to all of you. After listening to a very exciting and insulting talk from Dr. Meena Chhabra about type 1 diabetes and how do we need to connect and care for type 1 diabetes, I think this is time to actually go to the deep roots of how to do it. She said what to do. I agree with her 100%. But how to do it in our limited timings, in our resource limited country, we have many challenges. We can talk in such conferences. But I will pick up from the last slide where she talked of connect with them online. Connect with them through Zoom. So technology. Corona has given us many bad things, but it has also given us many good things. And one is the best utilization of technology in medicine. So we all know Steve Jobs, right? Apple, the founder of Apple. So Steve Jobs had given a statement that the day you will find interest, intersection of biology and technology, that will be the right utilization of technology. And we are just at that junction today. We are going to talk about how to implement technology skills in medicine, that is type 1 management, and how the life of a type 1 has changed by the technology advancements. So that is about type 1 and technology. Actually, when we talk of diabetes care, for a minute, forget the type 1 in the entire topic and just talk about diabetes care. So it begins with, you have a lot of social interaction. As Dr. Ranjana mentioned, we have food as a priority in India. Then we have, of course, the breakthrough in technology that we are facing every day. We have moved from our old cumbersome methods to wireless technology. We have, we all have Wi-Fi's, right? Broadbands. From broadbands, we have moved to Wi-Fi's. Bluetooth. So from wireless technologies, now we are moving to wearables. I can see the Apple Watches in most of the hands. And those Apple Watches give you instant ECGs, your blood pressures, your sugars, and many more things. So we have moved on to wearable technologies. And with that, what are we having? A huge data. So now we have our own Indian data to support everything we are doing. So huge data we have. And that is what we have with our today's technological advancements. So the agenda for my topic will be, do we really need technology in diabetes? If yes, then what are the current technology practices? And what is the future? Moving to the need of the R. So as we know, the burden of diabetes, we are, just yesterday Dr. Shashank mentioned, we are the world capital of type 1 diabetes. So we have a total burden of almost two leg children or more. So we have a huge burden of type 1 diabetes. And as a result, what do we do with these children? We are managing them in terms of managing blood glucose. We are monitoring them. We are in administering insulin. And also we are following them up closely. And how is all that possible? If we have the right utilization of technology. So just forget the medicine. And just look around. Your phones, they have actually walked a long way. We were having landlines first. Then we had those conventional small pagers during our residencies. Then we had the mobiles. And you know the first mobile I purchased with my own stipend. And I hid it inside my uh, cupboard. You know, I didn't tell my parents that I bought a mobile. It was something, a taboo. But now it's a show off. The best, the moment, I think most of you must have pre-booked your iPhone 14 already. So the technology has advanced so much. And why we are not using that entire technology in our medicine practice? We are using it everywhere. You know, most of the parents are now giving smartphones to their uh, babies in the, uh, I mean, the prams maybe, to the lullables. All the lorries are in the mobiles nowadays. So the same mobile, that same technology, same apps can be downloaded. And those apps can be utilized for our blood glucose, men, uh, not only monitoring, but also transferring the data, following them up closely, and using them for our adequate diabetes management. So what is the scope of the technology? We'll begin with the scope that is measurement. What is the first step in diabetes management? You need to know the values. And to know the values, you need to measure the blood glucose. And that is, Madam said, we should empower the child to measure the sugars. How do we empower him? By giving him a glucometer 
and teaching him SMBG that is self monitoring of blood glucose. Moving a step further, you can also use sensors. You can make the child a ac complete accommodative with the readers and the child can just place the reader in front of the sensors and without pricking can know his values. So we can accommodate the child with CGMS or even the FGP that is a flesh glucose monitors. Then comes the education part as ma'am was repeatedly saying educate and educate because education is empowering. My clinic sashakt that is empowering. So the idea is education empowers you. So education you don't you just don't need to leave your chairs you don't need to move out of your cabins. Sitting on your own chambers we are doing webinars enough webinars we are doing with our peer groups. Let us connect with our patients on these Zoom webinars. So you can convey your message about diabetes, importance of SMBG, importance of CGMS, how to train the patients in insulin administration. It's very, very easy to write a prescription. But who knows how to administer the insulin? I'll, sir was talking about, Dr. Arvind sir was talking about prescription errors. I will give you a very interesting example. I sent my patient on 10 units of Novo Rapid or whatever the insulin may be and he just injected himself one unit and came to me saying sugars are pretty high. Why? Because he said one unit I thought is equivalent to 10. So he just dialed one unit and now for an adult administering one unit what it will be? Just nothing. It's a placebo. So education is very important and then comes the next part that is treatment facilitation. Again we can use the same technology. Yes, you have to be available for your patients, of course. That same data is transferred to you through your, on your dashboards. Now, most of the apps enable us with our dashboards. So we can use that data to connect to our patients. Then there can be CGMS, which are coupled with hypo sensors. There are alarms. As ma'am was saying, we can't play with any pump because pumps can be killers. If there is an entire run out of the insulin, the patient might land up with a hypo. But we have hypo alarms nowadays. So that is one thing which can be taken care of right with your technology. So that is the need for technology. Nowadays, even for, I think, for the sessions, if my phone is with somebody else, I am not comfortable. So we are so adapted and addicted to technology that even if for a one day your Wi-Fi is shut down because of some exam going on in the town or because of some police survey, you are not comfortable with Wi-Fi. When will the Wi-Fi get connected again? So we are so addicted to technology. So the need of technology is well established. Then moving to what is the current technology in medicine. Who all are very well aware with this? We all are, I believe. We all started from here. The urine dipping, then matching, that color coding. So that was the time. Now how many times you think we can tell a type 1 child, go to the loo, get your urine sample, dip a stick and find out what are your sugars. Hardly we are doing that anymore. So what are we doing now? We are doing, we are giving them glucometers. And the glucometer also. If you remember the first glucometer, I gifted to my father, you know, it was this big. And the, thanks to the technology, today we have a very beautiful device, fancy device, which can get connected directly to your mobiles rather. So that is thanks to technology again. We are having chips, the microsensors, and the technology is MEMS, that is a microsensors, micro actuators, we have microelectronics, and we have microstructures. And that micro has given us mega benefits. And this micro converted into our mega benefits has transformed our diabetes management for our type 1 as well as type 2. So, as going back to Dr. Meena Chhabra, your patients. You want to help them? Give them the power of SMBG. Give them the power of CGMS. Give them the power of education through your Zoom networks, your webinars, your online platforms. Connect with them, teach them, and stay connected with them. So the advantages of glucometers, of course, they are very handy, portable. We can most of some of us maybe even carrying right now in our purses. So they are very advantageous. See. You can't find a coin without two faces, that's acceptable. We don't have any coin with two faces. So of course they also come with their own disadvantages. There is a challenge with accuracy. So they need calibration, they need standardization. 
So we need some standard and uh, reputed companies to come up with uh, standard glucometers. So we don't recommend any and every company, of course. But the glucometers are a big advantage. Then the SMBG. SMBG is self-monitoring of blood glucose, and it goes without saying that SMBG is only possible because of the glucometers. From glucometers, we have moved to sensors, CGMS, flash glucose monitors, and we have enough data that such data is not only written by the patient, preserved by the patient, but the same data is now shared. And when it comes to sharing, it is not only sharing with your physician or with your doctor. The same data at just one click goes to your relatives, your friends, your family. If suppose the old uh, parents are living alone far away in your native and the children are uh, working somewhere else, they even get an alert that your father or mother or your parents, somebody or even your child has gone into a hypo and they can send help right across. So technology has really helped us a lot in managing diabetes and we can really do our jobs in peace of mind, with peace of mind. So moving from the glucometers, as I was talking, we are now having smart glucometers or smart meters, where we have even the storage pockets where you can keep your extra strips. Then you have your device, you can even keep your lensets. You can also have small clips, you can see, you can just connect it to your smartphones. So you don't even need to have a display chamber, you don't even need to have a glucometer with you, you just need to have your smart meter. Now there is a meter magic. So this meter magic is again based on the CCM technology. This will give you a very accurate reading. Also keep your data stored, transfer your data to your physician and your family, and also maybe guide you as what next step you need to take, whether you need to take some glucose or you need to take some insulin. So the meters might even work as your temporary transient physician. Now the things are getting more convenient as we move from technology, advancement of technology, your phones are also coming with USB devices, USB data. So you can even transfer your data from one device to the other, they are all paired easily. And for children, type one, this is very interesting. They're even coming with game consoles. You can use the strip console here in your game. The child is playing, he's busy with that Pokemon maybe, or some Ash or something. They keep on playing, and there you can just put a strip there and sh just check a sugar, and that's it's done. Then, as somebody was talking about the tattoos, we have temporary tattoos now. So you can see the tattoos here. They are temporary tattoos. You don't need to prick every time. These tattoos, they keep guessing the sugars, and they transfer the data to your display machines, whichever you have paired them with. So they are the diabetic temporary tattoos available. I have five more minutes. Okay. Then CGMS, of course, the CGMS gives you a closed loop. You can couple it with your sensors, and the, and the data is transferred from your sensors to your pumps. The flash glucose monitors, which have made it very economical further. Now we have the 15-day sensors with us. We even have the longer sensors, but in India we do not have it. So we have the real-time data also available now with the sensors and these flash glucose monitors. Another advancement of technology which has really made life easy is doing away with this vial and syringe business. Compare the, what, what we need to do is the pairing of that 40 IU with 40 IU vial, 100 IU with 100 IU needle, and most of the time we are making errors. And that is done away with. We now have very smart pens. We even have pens which will tell you the dose, how much insulin is left in the cartridge. All those data is given with your smart pens. You also have the readers, you can see, and these are the uh, pumps. So we have the delivery device advancements. Inhalational insulins, yes, they were there in the market for some time, but sorry, it did not work out, they were withdrawn, but soon we will have them again. And with the peptide in a pill, oral semaglutide, we are very hopeful we might have oral insulins also. Then, of course, we have something like the tooth concept, which I will just talk to you. The inhalational insulins have been withdrawn, and the lack of uh, time is not allowing me to go into the depth of it. Then we have the nano pumps coming up. Again, with the MEMS technology, that is the micro SIMS, micro structures, micro actuators, and the micro technology. Beta cell encapsulation, the stem cell transplants, we still are not successful. And the reason we there are antibodies, and those antibodies, they attack whatever the transplant is done. 
So to bypass those antibodies, we have a new technology, and that is beta cell encapsulation. Now we are encapsulating the beta cells, and this encapsulation prevents them from being attacked by the antibodies. And we can combine it with immunotherapy, and that will help us probably in overcoming our type 1 diabetics, and we might, we might land up with cure, not with care. We can even start talking of cure of type 1 because there has been a vision of setting the world free of type 1. Then, of course, the artificial pancreas, the bionic pancreas, there is advancement. There was an initial venture with a huge, big pancreas, artificial pump, which did not work out. But now we have very mini chips, which are again the bionic pancreas. You can find here encapsulated uh, beta cells along with a chip, which is placed subcute. So coming to your apps again, you may be having hundreds of things. Your kitchens are fancy, but do you really use them ever? You just go and pick that one particular thing which you're used to. The same thing is with your mobiles. You are using that device. You're buying 1.5 lakh device for making a phone call. Phone calls can be made even with your landlines. So use your phone for the best of the technology, download the best of the apps which are available and get accustomed to them. There are apps like MySugar, there are apps like Diabetes Buddy, there are apps like Glucose Buddy, there are apps like Diabetes Pal. I'm not going into the details of each app, but they all come with their own speciality. Then we have MedSimple. We have Fitter Fitness Calculators, which actually tells you your target weight and where you are. Then this is the time, this is the future technology. How do we see our patient? How do we think we will be seeing our patients? I proposed also, Dr. Bansisa, that we can even have, we want to reach the rural areas, the villages. Let's have the Skype clinics. So we will have Skype clinics. We will be giving an online prescription. We will be seeing patients online, and we will be educating patients online. So sitting in your AC chambers, not subjecting yourself to the hot temperatures of India, you can reach out to the farthest of the village where there is internet available. So you can do that. So that is the future model of diabetes management. Diabetes registry, yes, we are planning to have a, a, our own registry very soon. It is going to be probably with us very soon, type 1 registry. The advantages of registry is that, again, we can reach to our total burden. We can plan the total need of the insulin, total need of the glucometers, total need of the glucometer strips, and we can make them available. So the idea is register your patients, join the registry, so that we actually know the total burden. This is a paper in the NEJM that was published, which is showing the significant benefit of type 1 diabetes management by the utilization of CGMS. So CGMS is going to give us the benefits of type 1 diabetes management. I'll just take one a half a minute more, maybe. So the future technologies, this is the last part of the agenda. The future technology lies with augmented reality. So we have augmented vision, augmented reality. You can use it to find out what will be the sugars without pricking your patients. You have something called the lenses. You have fluorescing implantable capsules, those capsules that keep changing colors as per your blood sugars. So green stands for healthy, red stands for unhealthy. And the intermediate color, they will be just like you were using the color coding for your urine sampling. Now you can use your color coding for your fluorescing capsules. Similarly, you have magnetic glucose sensors. Again, they have pH coding. So when the sugars rise, they become heavy, thick. And when the sugars fall, they become thin. They shrink down. So you can use these magnetic glucose sensors without pricking. Then optical lenses that some Dr. Murugnathan mentioned in the morning in his like, oration, that there are optical lenses. So these lenses are just like soft lenses which are having fluorescing sensors again inside. They are worn by the patient. And the color coding, you can see, is a hint of green is normal. Blue will be hypo. Patient is landing into a hypo. And if the color goes violet, it is very hypoglycemic. So just by looking at the color of the eye changes, you can announce that your patient is having a normoglycemia, hyperglycemia, or a hypoglycemia. Then we have the fiber optic sensors that mimic hair. So we have something very thin like a hair, which is placed again subcute. So are we ready for the future? Are we ready for the future? 
yes we are we are ready for the change we are the generation who has seen the maximum change we have seen our grandparents with all conventions we are seeing our children who are far ahead of us probably so we are the generation who has seen the maximum change and so we are ready for the change we are ready for the future technology thank you so much and this is the diffusion model which will tell you that yes we are ready so we are here at the blue zone we are the most pragmatic generation and we are ready for the future management of type 1 diabetes thank you so much